you forever! Come on, everyone! Rolling? I think we're rolling. Right, Manchester Marathon recap video. I finished the race in three hours, 47 minutes and 41 seconds, which gave me an average pace of five minutes, 23 kilometers, or in miles, it's 841. So the plan this whole time, the 16 weeks, I was hoping for a three hour 42 finish as you know the reason for that if if, if you don't know is the first time it's only my third marathon third marathon but the first one i did did it in 422 second one 402 so wanted to just continue the trend of chopping off 20 minutes at a time and as ambitious as it was i actually thought it was quite doable and the closer the start line got during the training the more i thought I think I can do this. I reckon I could. I really think I can do it. So to get a 3.42.59, a 3.42 finish, I would have had to complete the marathon in five minutes and 17 seconds per kilometre or eight minutes 30 per mile or quicker. So on the start of the marathon, I, in fact, let me just rewind a bit further than that. So the actual day of the marathon, Getting there was a breeze, really. We chose, Laura and I, to stay on a farm in an Airbnb a bit further out of the hustle and bustle of the, of the city. So we chose comfort over convenience uh, because for that privilege of convenience, you get charged ridiculous amounts. I'm talking like 250 quid for a travel lodge. I ain't doing that because you get stag do's, hen do's, all sorts of people charging through the hallways in the middle of the night and I can't be doing with that. I think I'm showing my age by getting annoyed by young people. <laughs> I'm only 37. And basically we, cho we, we chose to stay on this farm which was out in the sticks. It was out towards Huddersfield, just over by uh, the other side of Oldham for any of you that know that area. And the plan was to get the tram and this is what happened in the morning uh, of the day, six o'clock, wake up, quarter to six, wake up, half past six leave, get to the tram for 7am to Oldham Mumps, which is one of the furthest tram stops out that I could have gotten into, which was easy to access by car. So we got into Manchester City Centre, short um, change at, uh, I think it was St. Peter's, one of the city centre lines, and then we changed for uh, Trafford Bar, I think it was. Can't remember, I'll have to double check. And then we got there, the, the uh, organization of getting 30,000 runners up and running, I think was actually really good. There wasn't a hell of a lot of confusion or standing around. It was actually, it was actually, it was actually quite good. It was actually not that stressful. There was a wait for, a, for the toilet, obviously, as you can imagine, but uh, it, was, it wasn't too bad. So we managed to get away in start blue A, which was just around about halfway, just before halfway, or, you know, in the first 50% of runners that set off that day. So I was, I was uh, yeah, because of my predicted finish time, which I put as 3.42, that quad, that I got put in blue A. Um, and the, the actual start of the race was okay. I started with the 3.45 pacer uh, because he was uh, running in my corral. Um, but this could be my first mistake. Well, it, it was because I just got, I, I just hate running around paces. I, it's so congested um, and it just wasn't good for me. I felt claustrophobic. I just didn't really like it. And I what I should have done is hung back, but instead I got ahead. Because in my head, I'm thinking later on in the, in the race, he's gonna be hunting me down. As long as I can stay in front of him, then I've beat him, 3.45. So hopefully, you know, 3.42 won't be too far away. That was my first mistake, I got ahead of the pacer. So what I did was, in the first 5K, my first split was 25.04, felt really good. Um, so that was obviously five minute splits, pretty much. That's probably a little bit quick 
in fact, it is a little bit quick. That is a 331, 332 marathon. Now the danger is, I convinced myself in the early stages of that race and the weekend leading up, I think I might be in 332 shape here. Now I know how greedy that sounds because this whole time I've been promising to deliver a 342 marathon. So I've only got myself to blame for that. And of course, 10K goes by, split was 526. We've slowed down slightly. Uh, we're about a 505 pace by now. Um, nothing too astronomically quick. It's nowhere near my half marathon pace. My threshold, nowhere near my threshold. I'm still mid to, mid to late 160s heart rate. So nothing's feeling too tiresome nor too bad. And of course, I'm feeling good. I've just gone through Deansgate, past the skyscrapers. Life is good. Everyone's cheering your name. Everyone's cheering you on. All the other runners around you are going at a good pace. And yeah, 10 kilometers in, that's the danger because you feel good. Of course you do. You've been training for a marathon, which is not even a quarter of the distance you're at. So at 10K, feeling good is dangerous because you can then think, oh, I, I reckon I could run this little, this pace for the rest of it. That's not how it goes. Um, so through, one fift through um, 15 and 20K, I was at 115 uh, pace. Um, so again, held pace up to 15k 20k slowing slightly to about my math doesn't tell me here but maths are about 508 per k so still staying below that 510 is what i wanted to stay below and another reason okay not to justify why i went off too fast or get defensive but one of the main reasons i did it is because i knew that i would run long i knew the course would measure long on my watch because it's such a big marathon there'll be a lot of weaving i wouldn't take every corner on the inside i wouldn't follow the blue line to the letter so i knew the course would last i don't know an extra 500 meters so i knew i had to stay below 5 11 which is what i in my head that i wanted to stay below um and it ended up being i could stay below 517 but again trust your watch at your peril in a marathon because it will it will never be bang on and then Altrincham came. Now, you've probably heard everyone mention this infamous place in Cheshire. Uh, it's the only place, it's not the only place. Manchester is not a flat marathon. So I wish they wouldn't sell it as a flat marathon because it isn't. But then again, we live in the UK. We're on a little island. Everywhere's hilly. There are, there are rises and falls everywhere in this country. So just be warned, it's not a flat marathon, especially the hard work starts to come at mile 26, which is, what's that, 17 mile. You've got an incline up to Altrincham, and in my head I'm thinking, I've been training on the Mulvans. I did the Droitwich Half Marathon, which had 300 metres of elevation in a half marathon. I'm going to be fine. The danger is my heart rate spiked, and I crossed that threshold. By the time I'd run through Altrincham and down the hill, I couldn't recover in time. So I'm at 35k by now, well 32, and I'm start, starting to really, really hit me hard. I'm running as fast, I'm running way faster than I've ever run a marathon before, and way faster, longer, a longer distance as well. So by 32k, I just, my pace slipped. I think I'm kilometer 34, I picked it back up slightly, but then I just faded because that heart rate got too high, everything felt too difficult. So I ended up getting to 35K, three hours, two minutes and 14 seconds, 40K at 3.31, 59. And then we ended up crossing the line. Um, the official time was 4.3.47.41. So uh, what am I now? Here we go then, gels. So I, I took with me six gels, uh, five actually, because I had one at the start line and I ended up taking four. My last gel was at 32, and I knew by then my race could have been over, so I think I'd already started to throw my toys out of the pram, and I was already feeling nauseous. So I just, I got to 36K, and I wasn't thinking clearly. I, I should have had a gel then, really, but I didn't. Uh, just choose to left, leave it in my, in my, in my pocket. Um, would it have made any difference by then? Probably not. Uh, but I was feeling nauseous, so I did, the last thing you want is a, is, a, is a gel, I think. And there's there's runners out there who don't take any gels. 
you know, which is crazy. Um, who have managed to get through the marathon? You might watch Stephen from Feel My Run. He famously, famously, he did Paris recently without any gels. So it can be done um, with a minimal gel intake, but probably not advisable for beginner runners like me, uh, because I still do class myself as a beginner runner because um, it's only my third marathon. So yeah, I'd, I'd five out of my six gels. No, yes, five out of my six gels on the course. Um, now a big decision that went, could have been critical was I chose not to take water with me. I was planning on it, but as I loaded myself up and on the day the phone went in the back pocket, I've got my water out and I just thought, I don't like the feel of it. I trained with it, but on the day it just didn't feel right. So I chose not to. Um, it wasn't loaded with electrolytes or anything, it was just water. And I thought, I'll just take advantage of the on water course, the on course water. And that's what I decided to do. Was that critical? I don't know. So, um, and then I've put here, <laughs> finish line sprint, question mark? Nope. I could see the finish line. Basically you turn a corner and you can see the finish line in the distance. It's a big arch and it just felt like it was getting further and further and further away from me. Um, my watch had already ticked over a marathon by now, so I'd already lost my head. And I was only about seven, 600 meters away from it, but it just didn't feel like it was getting any closer. Uh, and then I recorded the end, which I'm glad I did actually, because um, it's always good. The, well, we're just going off piste a bit here, but the reason I record these marathons is because I'm recording, I'm getting on film some of the, what will be, amazing moments of my life, my running life, and I'm getting these on, on film and crossing a finish line at a race, especially a huge race, is a special feeling. So I'm really glad that I remembered to hit the record button. Um, but I wanted to sprint, I wanted to finish hard, I just couldn't. And I ended up finishing at about 5.25 pace, 5.30 pace, uh, which I was pleased with. To be honest, I was just glad I wasn't walking it. Now, a few things I've got to mention is cramp. I've never, ever had cramp in my life when I've been running. Surprise, surprise, it came to bite me in the backside. About 35K in, I, ex I, 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 what you call it, experienced quite bad cramps in my hamstrings and it was just excruciating. It was just horrible. I mean, I know I'm singing to the choir here, because most of you will know what this feels like, but what happened was, the re what brought it on for the first one, I could feel it rumbling, and I just thought, it's just my hamstrings feeling tired. But there was someone in front of me, and they just did a dead stop. And I'm talking like, maybe my own fault for following them too closely. From me to the camera away now, running at pace, admittedly not a fast pace. My reaction times were slowed because I was tired. I put the brakes on because they just stopped dead on the road. As soon as I sort of threw my weight backwards, I cramped up and I was walking like a pirate. I was walking like Long John Silver. And I've, I just, my left hamstring just completely cramped up and it was awful. Um, and then it just, I, I eventually ran it off and then it would keep coming back every three or four minutes or something like that. So I keep having to take those walk breaks. Uh, but I'm glad I did because if I, if, God knows what would have happened if I'd have, not taking those walk breaks. But cramp kind of slows you down and makes you take those breaks because it's so painful and so sort of debilitating. You have to you have to sort yourself out before you can carry on. Um, so yeah, not, not a big fan of that. Now I've put a little thing on my um, notes here and I think I'm gonna get slaughtered, crucified for saying this, but I wanna be transparent. I wanna be honest as I can and I don't want, well basically I'm just gonna say it. Okay, so some honesty here. This training block, I have done zero strength work, not even a press up. Every week that's approached in training, I've thought, right, I do strength next week. I do strength next week, but I found excuses and I just never did it. Um, so I prioritized high volumes in running and no strength. That's just, I've fallen on my sword a little bit there because it came back to haunt me, didn't it? Um, so yeah, just being, holding my hands up there and admitting that I just didn't do any strength work. Uh, secondly, no electrolytes either. Very minimal electrolytes throughout this whole training block and especially none on race day. Probably could have done with some, 
that might have helped my cramping. However, I know a lot of people take salt tabs, a lot of people, you know, take tailwind with them, and they still encounter cramps. So maybe it's just a case of managing cramp rather than getting to avoid it, to prevent it. Maybe it's unpreventable when you are running at a quick pace or a, a quick pace that's relative to you. So there you go, no electrolytes, um, no uh, strength training, and thirdly, yeah, my gels, I didn't practice enough with the gels. And instead of in training, leaving it right until week 14, 15, 16, to start taking gels on. Because until then, I was only doing maybe one 30K run a week from week six onwards. Uh, so yeah, I took a couple of gels on those runs, but I didn't really practice enough taking gels at regular intervals. So next race, I've got a lot to think about. I've, less, I've learned lessons. Lessons have been learned, I should say. Um, but I'm still happy. I got a personal best by 15 minutes. So all that training, that low aerobic base training that I did, I run a lot of easy miles, as you know, if you follow my journey. And I think that really uh, came through for me. Um, the proof's in the pudding. I've improved. Maybe not as much as I would like to have done, but, uh, but still. So I think if I can just introduce those things into the next marathon, because there will be another one, then hopefully I can break that 342. Um, the, the, the PBs are going to start being broken by less and less and less time now, because I'm finding it a little bit, well, a lot more difficult each time, whether we're on a 5K, um, a half or a marathon, whatever. So don't expect any more PBs anytime soon. But I'm glad to be done with the marathon distance for a while. The last 16 weeks have been really tough. Um, they've just, it's been awesome though, but it's been really tough. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing some other races over the, over the spring and summer that's approaching. And yeah, we'll pick that up. We'll pick the marathon back up, I think in the back end of summer when we make a decision on what to do next. So let me know in the comments, what marathon are you going to do later on in the year? Did you do Manchester? How did you find it? Did Altrincham break you? Were you broken before or after that? Or maybe you didn't even hit the wall at all. Let me know how Manchester was for you. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I've been as honest as I can, as I, I've been as honest as I can about the mistakes I made. Um, again, hold my hands up because I know what I did. I went off too fast, didn't do any strength training, didn't practice enough of my gels on my long runs, and maybe not enough marathon pace integrated into my long runs in training as well. So you can come at me, you can shout at me in the comments, and I'm probably just gonna be like, I know, because I know. So there you go. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for sticking around to watch this. Next video is gonna be a little vloggy style video of the weekend of the marathon, uh, you know, speaking to as many people as I could, uh, what it was like before and afterwards, and where we stayed and all that sort of, um, all that sort of stuff. So I'm looking forward to making that video. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys on the next video. Manchester was awesome. I can't wait to do another marathon and I'll see you on the next video. Take it easy guys. Ta-da.